Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we'll see the new man in D.C., Case Keenum, and the Washington Redskins as they take on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. With that, we send you up to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, standing by our commentator, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, U.S. Bank Stadium holds just under 70,000 spectators, and they've come out in full force for this one. A fantastic atmosphere here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building, and just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Washington Redskins. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly your keys to the game. Well, partner, I can give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Town Minneapolis. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. The Redskins offense led by their new quarterback, Case Keenum. And Keenum, a guy, he's seen his fair share of highs and lows in this game. The high, likely his 22 touchdown season for the Vikings in 2017, and the low probably being traded by Denver after one 6-10 season. But here he is, ready to rock and roll. This is Chris Thompson in his seventh season now as a Redskin. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The last run got six, now second and four. Now it's Keenan. And he hits the tight end, it's Davis. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every... In a heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the pro bowler, Anthony Barr. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. And the defense could not have written a much better script than that first drive, pick six. The offense never got a chance to really get oiled up there, did they? But the defense, they certainly got in gear. What a big-time play and a great way for them to start. And now the offense, they've got to turn things around and figure this out because your backs are on the ground real quickly. Yeah, usually when you're starting the game getting the ball, 0-0 zero, zero is the only score you're worried about. Now the second time you get it, you're already down a touchdown. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. As Washington comes back out here offensively, it gives us a chance to talk about their Week 6 win, their first of the season. Now, granted, it was against Miami, who was still winless, but they got the job done, defended a two-point conversion in the dying moments of that game to secure the victory. Hashtag HTTR. Cue the music. Everyone has to be happy to get that first win. We know that they let Jay Gruden go as their head coach October the 7th. Bill Callahan has taken over as the interim guy. He was their offensive line coach. So what will he want to do with that offense? Run the football. That's what he said his opening press conference. And how did they run it against Miami? 145 yards, and AP was over 100 in that game. Yeah, he's going to be very happy to have Bill Callahan as the interim head coach. And now they get ready for San Francisco. Then they go to Minnesota, and they go to Buffalo. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now Keenum. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to bring up a third down. Quickly now a look at the defensive starters for Minnesota. Harrison Smith's play has been so good in the NFL that he demands the respect of everyone. And I remember a couple years ago when we talked about the top safeties, his name didn't come up in the first group. It does now. I remember doing a game a couple years ago where the Rams were trying a lot of razzle-dazzle stuff. And Mike Zimmer, his head coach, pretty much said, sick him to Harrison Smith. And he ended that in a hurry. He can play close to the line of scrimmage, can also cover deep. From the gun on third down, Keenum. And he finds McLaurin. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Keenum now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. Now a man in his 13th NFL season, it's Adrian Peterson. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. On second and 12, Keenum. Complete, Richardson has it. And now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Vikings offense trots back out. And as they get this next possession going, CD, you had their game week six against Philly. Now they're at four and two. What do you make of this team? We're finally seeing the Vikings we expected to see. They're putting it together on both sides of the ball because the defense has been pretty well a constant throughout the season. But now the offense has really joined them. It's not just Dalvin Cook running the football. Kirk Cousins can sting people downfield with Adam Thielen, with Stephon Diggs. They even got Kyle Rudolph involved in this game at tight end. So this is a team now that's playing with a lot of confidence, and they will be dangerous as the season rolls on. And Diggs was dangerous. What, did he have three touchdowns that game? Three touchdowns, and the best part was after the game in his post-game interview, after a monster game for him, he said, yeah, but I dropped two. So he's looking to improve. Go. 
After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Set the tone, defense. Set the tone, defense. On play action, Cousins. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. Well, it doesn't take any great analysis. No jokes, partner, okay? All right, on this one. But we just know that we're going to see this as the game moves forward. There's going to be two guys on him on just about every snap. It's kind of a dare to throw his way, but they have to keep throwing his way. The benefits could be great. You throw it to a great receiver, he could come down with it anyway. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. The dump off gets him only one, and now you're looking at a third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. On third down, Cousins. Open man is Thielen. It's complete. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 25 yards that time. Well, that didn't take very long. You mentioned you have to keep him under wraps. Avoid the big play is what you said, and here he makes one of the first quarter. Yeah, you can't let this become a habit. Otherwise, you know what will happen? They'll flat out take over this game. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. On a jet sweep, this is Johnson. Had some space to move right away as he's all the way up to the 30. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. <laughs> Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Running the jet sweep. This is Thielen with it. And a loose football. And the Redskins scoop it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. 
Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic oath, first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. Keenum and the Redskins now going to come up first and 10 at the 20. <laughs> Following the fumble recovery, Keenum. They will find Davis. That's complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards, the final tally. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Shotgun handoff to Thompson, and he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. On second down, it's Thompson. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by this Vikings defense. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. And with a third and 14, we have six defensive backs out there now defensively. Shotgun snap for Keenum. That's going to be caught by Richardson. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A good pick up there of 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 41. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Off play action, Keenan. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Out of the gun, Keenum. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at second down. He's not exactly had a banner start to this game. We're still in the first quarter. He's already thrown an interception, and that should have been the second one. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Throwing now is Keenum. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. That man, Terry McLaurin, may be an early dark horse for rookie of the year and really one of the lone bright spots offensively for Washington. McLaurin had his second 100-yard game of the year, week six, in the win over Miami. 
reeled in touchdown catches four and five of the young season and if you go back over the last 20 years only he and Calvin Ridley have been able to have that many touchdown grabs in the first month and a half of the season Keenum now hitting on 80 percent of his passes in the early going eight of ten it's first down throwing is Keenum toward the center of the field but it's incomplete I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. So now on fourth down, the Redskins will hand things over to their kicker, Dustin Hopkins. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. Hopkins' kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Now Cousins. Complete. It's Johnson. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Cousins gives way to Cook. It's a foot race. 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. Delvin Cook, 69 yards. And the Vikings get the quick strike touchdown. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Here's Bailey now for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was.
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And it's tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Keenum and the Redskins now going to come up first and 10 at their own 27. From the gun, it's Keenum. Over the middle, complete. That's Richardson. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. After one, a 14-3 ball game. The Redskins with the football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a second and one coming up. It's Keenum. And that gonna be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Redskins on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll run it. Here's Peterson. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They have the first down with that gain of four yards. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back him up five. Here we go. Here we go. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Following the penalty, it's Peterson. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and it'll be a second and long. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. On second down now. It's Peterson, and the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. 
Needs something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Working from the gun, Keenum. And he drops this off to Thompson complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him three on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. So on fourth down, the Redskins will call on Tressway to punt it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books. But it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means he's, he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They start the drive with Cook. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. On the ground, it's Cook. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. And he's able to get more than half of what they needed. That brings up a third and five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Cousins from the gun on third. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. And I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Throwing his cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. A Vikings first down. Diggs able to find his way free and get the catch from Cousins. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They go play action. Cousins. 
Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And it's second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. On the carry, it's Cook. And he'll take this one down to the 36. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Vikings on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and eight. Cousins. That's complete to the receiver fielder. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. They hit that crossing route really well. Excellent timing, puts it right on him, and he keeps running. Yeah, turned it upfield for good yardage. Cousins now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. From the red zone now, Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to the ground, Cook. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. The Vikings on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is third and 11. Here's Cousins. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs there to make the grab. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Bailey now for the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Kick it away after the touchdown. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And this, let's face it, an important drive if they're going to get back into this ballgame. Think about going into the locker room down 21-10 as opposed to 21 to 3. 21 to 10, a little more optimism, a little more bounce around the locker room, a little more discussion about how they're going to finish this thing off. 21 to 3, I think discouragement clouds that locker room. Yeah, and I think a touchdown much bigger than a field goal on this drive just to get into the end zone and get that momentum. 
Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Well, with that incompletion, let's do something different. I'm going to go through a few teams that are on losing streaks, and you tell me if there's reason for concern there. Let's start with the Cowboys. Definitely reason for concern. Not as dominant on defense as they should be. And offensive line injuries. Three straight losses. They're three and three. How about the Chiefs? Two straight home losses. Yeah, they just can't stop anyone running the football. Okay, and then the Rams, the three straight losses for them. Yeah, definite reason for concern. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. When a team's turned it over three times in the first half, we just look at the offense and say, guys, what are you doing? But instead, we really should be looking at the defense. They've created the takeaways. Two interceptions, one cause fumble. They played awfully well swarming to the ball here in the first half. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run on first down. It's Cook. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They just do get the playoff. Now Cousins, and Diggs has it. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. Working out of the gun, Cousins. It's complete to Diggs. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. So Cousins heads to the Vikings sideline, and on is Dan Bailey to try the field goal. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's a 21-point game. So a good snap, good hold, and right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit them, partner. You mean like uh, kicking the ball? Exactly. Well, that was a high school. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't care what level you hit them, they go through. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. The intended target was the rookie, Terry McLaurin. And that'll bring up second down. All right, CD, let's have a little fun. Now that we're into October, I'm going to give you some AFC teams. You tell me quickly, contender or pretender. You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's start in the East. Buffalo. Contender for a wild card spot. Okay, how about the Chargers? Pretender. 
AFC North, the Steelers. Contender because the AFC North is a jumble. Okay, and then lastly, let's go to the South, Jacksonville. Pretender, Houston now in control. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. The Redskins on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. A shotgun snap for Keenan. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. The Redskins have the first down on a pickup of 18. here the tight end 10 yards on the pick up there and it'll be second down obviously this has not been a banner game throwing the football so what you got to do you got to kind of down focus don't you think find the tight end take some easier completions the interception last drive there he hits the reliable target so second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker now Keenum under a heavy rush and down he goes and we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando on this first half of action. To throw is Keenum. And this is going to be incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Here's Tressway now as he'll kick it away for the second time. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Here comes Kirk Cousins now to lead his offense back out there. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, <laughs> their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. Cousins on first down. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Okay, now I want to revisit what we were doing earlier, contender versus pretender. We did the AFC. Let's rock the NFC here, starting with the New York Giants. Pretender, but much improved. Okay, <laughs> NFC North, how about the Vikings? Contender, no doubt about it. Carol and the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Jonathan Bostic coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget.
So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Not wanting to risk another sack. They'll play it safe with a run. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. The Redskins now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on to punt. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Out there ready for this next drive, the Redskins offense. Time here for likely a couple plays if they want it, but with the field position what it is, maybe better suited to just sit on this one? I'm with you totally. I would sit on it and get into the locker room and, and start over. But if they do decide to try and make a play, we know what the basics are. You run draw, you run screen. I would maybe run a little swing pass and try and get my lineman out in space and see if they can chop a hole into the secondary and see if he can run a little bit. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Out of the gun, Keenum. Complete, Richardson has it. And oh, he coughed it up! So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Adam Thielen and the rest of the Vikings offense, they get set for their next possession. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. From the 29, Cousins toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and it's third down. 
You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. To me, the defense is looking a little gassed near the end of the first half, but they've come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. I don't know, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Redskins football now with a first and ten. So here's the Redskins offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. First play of the drive is a run with Thompson. Shamar Steffen there on the tackle. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. They go with Thompson again. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know, in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. Third down, it's Adrian Peterson. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. A lot of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Watch the screen! Watch the screen! Play action. Now it's Keenum. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, we got a second. Let's look ahead to week seven and what's on the slate. Uh, things start out Thursday night. Kansas City at Denver, divisional battle. Suddenly an interesting game. Kansas City having lost their last two. And Denver now playing defense as we expected. But how about the NFL 100 game of the week? Oakland at Green Bay, a rematch of Super Bowl II. Also have New Orleans at Chicago and Philly visiting Dallas on Sunday night. That is a huge one in the NFC East. Yeah, both teams 3-3. Three and three. The winner will have the lead in that division. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. That's going to be caught by Richardson. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down.
gets him a yard. It's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. The give to Peterson out of the gun. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the 50, it's Keenum. Open man is Quinn. He completes it. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Tressway now, as he's on to punt for Washington. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong? You know, back and forth like that. But it definitely was excellent, wasn't it? And now out comes Minnesota. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. On first and ten, Cousins. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. They're running, man. Alert three, alert three. Alert three. On first down, it's Cook. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. It was Jonathan Bostic there on the stop. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. They run it again with Cook. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now the Redskins on third down putting an extra man here in the secondary play action now Cousins this is Johnson he's got it he'll get 15 and a Vikings first down They'll run on first down. Cook, and he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Again, it's Cook. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. 
No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? On third down, Cousins, and that is incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what Why is working, and call more of that. So first and 10 now from the 30. Working from the gun, Keenum. And he hits the tight end. It's Davis. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down for the Redskins on a pickup of 11. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Paul Richardson there, but it's going to be second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Keenum again here on second and 10. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 44-yard line. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Keenum now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. You better be afraid of me. A tenth carry now for Peterson. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. I can't believe they let you play. I can't believe they even let you play. On play action, it's Keenum. Trying to lay one up deep. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. From the gun on third down, Keenum. And he finds McLaurin. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 26. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Keenum. And his throw here is incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Bring 
Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Again, they'll throw with Keenum. Got a man, that's Quinn. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing again is Keenum. Going for it all. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He hit his first, now this from 43. And Hopkins' kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done. Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. You're three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Just like that. Just like that. They run. Cook. Cook with a first down and much more. And he will be taken down, but a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Cook. And this time they were ready for him as he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus 
on the big fellows up front in order to bring this one home. The Vikings on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This will be third and five. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And they're gonna mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first Jim down. Close it out. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this Let's score go. will stay right where it is. Now listen, now, no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. starting spot for the Redskins as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. From the gun, it's Keenum. He's got it complete to Thompson. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Back to throw, Keenum. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Quinn. Seven yards there and a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Throwing on first down is Keenum. Over the middle complete, it's Quinn. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. A gain of six there on first. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. To Thompson on the draw. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. A shotgun snap for Keenan. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. The sack by big number 98, Linval Joseph. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Uh, you know that they were thinking second-half comeback here. That's a big miss if they want to have a chance at that comeback. A very big miss because time is becoming a real factor now and they're three scores down. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. Go. 
Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. And they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Number 53, Mike 53. We got him, we got him. Play fake. Cousins. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. And the Redskins scoop it. Pass the 20. And he gets it back into the end zone. It's a fumble recovery leading to a Washington touchdown. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. You know, that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And it is good. That cuts the lead now to 11-24, 13-hour score. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. Off the play fake, Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Cousins now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off right around the 43. Johnson was the intended receiver. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you would think maybe you're just sitting on it and trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. Come 
They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 43. After the interception, here's Keenum. Complete, Richardson has it. 12 yards is the pickup, and it's good for a Washington first down. Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sidelines? You see the coaches signaling, all the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. False start, offense. That's going to set them back five yards. Let's go, baby. Let's go. From midfield, here's Keenum. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. On second and 15 now. Keenum. And down he goes. Keenum is sacked. Emerson Griffin in there to bury him for a loss of 11. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. From the gun, here's Keenum. Completes it to Davis. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17, but even with that, they'll be well short here for fourth down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They do snap it to Keenum. And that'll be intercepted by the Pro Bowl safety, Harrison Smith. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 24. A run there on first down and a pretty good one at five yards, so make it second and five. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Now the throw here complete on the right sideline. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. 
Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick out, things that they consider safe. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. To throw, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Adam Thielen, 62 yards. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Extra point try by Bailey. And the lead is up to 18 now. Scoring summary. Three play drive. And it's polished off by a Viking score. Kick it away after the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. About set now for their next drive, Case Keenum and the Redskins. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Keenum and the Redskins now going to come up first and 10 at their own 24. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. That's complete to his receiver, McLaurin. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. the carry Thompson try to find a lane but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more Eric Kendricks in on the tackle this run defense has been pretty stout all game long now you're here in the fourth quarter to rely more on the passing attack I don't think you have any choice and I don't think you have to dress it up at all either throughout the first three quarters you're still trying to convince the defense that you may run the football that's out the window right now Protect, let your quarterback operate, and try and find some targets in the open field downfield. That'll put him at 95 receiving yards now as he's got a first down. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can't go to try to go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. On first down, Thompson and able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. 
to throw is Keenum. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Redskin football here as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. To throw, it's Keenum. And that will be incomplete. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go on fourth, Keenum. And it is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And out now come the Vikings. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. It's Cook, and for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere as they bury him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and it'll bring up a second and 13. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they get a little bit of a win there, but let's face it, the vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Cook, and he's got it across the midfield, stripe it into Washington territory. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. To be a case of see ball, get ball. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory, and they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, Pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away. Taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.